Initially, I did what I tend to do in sims like this one and skipped the campaign for Park Beyond, going straight into the sandbox. The game suggested I at least try the tutorial, and after relenting, I found it was succinct and easy to digest. I would recommend just ignoring the campaign and saving yourself the trouble of having to spend any time with its waxwork-like characters and going right into the meat of Park Beyond building absurd roller coasters. Creating your own elaborate rides is undoubtedly the most fun part of Park Beyond. The controls and physics take some getting used to, but you're given pretty remarkable freedom to create what you want. Although it does have to physically work in the end, Park Beyond does help you out with clear visual indicators of what's working and what isn't, and it's also got a pretty large selection of shops, restaurants, scenery, and pre-built rides that you can use to bulk out your park, which can be upgraded through impossification, a cute mechanic which lets you channel visitor happiness into buffing up rides and facilities. The terrain manipulation options are pleasingly vast, too, and a lot of the more impressive roller coaster add-ons want you to take advantage of your free reign over the terrain, letting you shoot passengers over lakes, tunnel underground, or even loop around through man-made gaps in the environment. Pair this with the free-form nature of the track building and large large toy box of items at your disposal, and it's a seriously impressive set of tools. I tested Park Beyond on two different builds, and whilst it ran smoothly on the stronger, the weaker of the two, running an i7-7820X, RTX 2060 Super, and 16 gigs of RAM, which is well above the given system requirements, ran into beefy load times and some noticeable slowdown when my parks started to get a little too big. Worse though, on both builds I ran into some serious bugs, frequent crashes, infinitely stuttering music, and loads of texture clipping when using optional camera modes. A lot of missions refused to progress, and the quick select options in the management menu would often teleport me to the wrong shop or staff member, meaning I had to find what I was looking for manually. Park Beyond feels like a difficult game to critique. If you'll permit me using one cheesy metaphor, its main attraction is impressive, but it's lacking in amenities. The system of building and customizing your park is really impressive. One of the best such systems I've seen in a sim, but all the actual management is so underbaked as to feel tacked on. And without a robust campaign to challenge you, the experience feels thin. If all you want to do is hop straight into sandbox mode, give yourself unlimited funds, and build an unfeasibly large roller coaster, Park Beyond's worth picking up after a few performance patches and probably on sale. If you're looking for any depth beyond that, however, I can't recommend it at all. I've been trying to avoid harping on comparing Park Beyond to its obvious inspiration, Roller Coaster Tycoon, but at a certain point you have to put them side by side. When you realize how little Park Beyond has evolved the core formula, leaving its management systems feeling archaic, the creativity and freedom in creating rides and designing your park is light years ahead of what was possible in early Sims, but the rough, buggy edges and the lack of depth make even Park Beyond's strengths feel like putting cinnamon on a plate of sawdust. Thank you.